Hi folks and welcome to the West Vaco Industrial Railway. Uh, this is my HO scale model railroad, um, which is loosely based on the West Vaco uh, paper plant located in Luke, Maryland. <clears throat> this series of videos that I'm starting now is primarily uh, centered around the fact that I have enough of the railroad done now uh, that I can start uh, testing switching scenarios. Uh, I have built this layout primarily as a uh, switching and operations layout. Uh, it's a point-to-point -point layout, uh, no continuous running, although that may change in the future. Uh, and uh, you'll notice that I'm at various stages of things like scenery, building development, track laying, etc., etc. Uh, I know a lot of people do uh, their models in a linear fashion and complete one series of tasks such as wiring or structures or scenery and then move on to the next. I have ADD, I can't handle that. I need to have a little bit more, oh, I guess, variety. Uh, and so my uh, variety at the moment is to test a few switching scenarios. So that's what these next videos are intended to do. Uh, for those of you who have not been watching uh, the videos, uh, to date the videos have been uh, primarily focused <clears throat> around my rather bizarre method of design. Um, I don't do track plans on uh, software and things like that. I just kind of lay it out, see what works, what looks good, what meets my basic requirements, and then lay track and move from there. Uh, and that's caused me a couple of problems, which you uh, will have noted if you've watched those videos. Uh, but generally speaking, I, I find that a fun way to go about uh, planning a track plan and uh, a model rover in general. And it seems to have worked out pretty far, uh, at least to the point where I am able now to actually start testing. <clears throat> and the purpose of the testing is that this is intended to be an operator's railroad. Um, I intend to have operating sessions by my estimation right now uh, without very many uh, test scenarios being ran is that I can probably support uh, four or five operators uh, on various jobs uh, on this level of the layout and then uh, there will be a lower level it's a double decker when the layout is finished. Uh, for those of you just joining the uh, video series, um, I will give a really brief tour uh, and then get on uh, with the first um, switching challenge and explain it as I go. And if you have feedback, uh, ideas about how I can improve this uh, switching scenario, make it easy on operators, make it more realistic, uh, please leave comments in the comment field. And uh, otherwise, uh, stand by for a brief introduction to the railroad itself, uh, and then we'll get started. Thank you. Okay, as I mentioned in the uh, opening, uh, the layout is basically a proto-freelance, um, uh, somewhat uh, fantastical representation of the West Vaco uh, paper plant in Luke, Maryland, um, which existed uh, until uh, I believe it was um, uh, May of 2019, the mill closed. Um, and so my model uh, is a tribute to it at this point. Um, it's uh, the design of the layout, um, as I mentioned, is intended for switching and operations. As you can see, it's in various stages of completeness, and I'll go over this briefly. Um, if you start down here in the junk pile at the end, this will eventually be a mountain with a tunnel, uh, where the tunnel comes out at the uh, very edge of the layout right there. Uh, it will enter onto this helix, which is on its side currently, uh, because I need to rebuild it. it uh, I got it for free, but it was built for somebody else's layout, 
and uh, it spirals in the wrong direction and comes out in uh, a place that makes uh, curves too tight. So it flips over onto this table here that has even more junk on it and carries trains between this upper level which is partially scenic to partially complete uh, with buildings almost entirely complete with track work uh, goes down the spiral and then comes out on this lower level wherein will be uh, actually I can throw some light on this subject stand by uh, on this lower level, I haven't decided what's going to go on the back there, but uh, the curve will come out towards the back of this table behind where that glue bottle is and the pillow <clears throat> and make another gradual curve uh, to the right and come out here to the juice of the uh, lower level, uh, which is a staging yard um, of the maximum size that I can achieve here. I'm thinking I can probably get six to eight tracks under here uh, and then it will curve over here and support a engine servicing facility. Um, a key thing to note here is not only is it a double uh, layer or excuse me double decker uh, layout uh, it's also built in a um, sectional design I hesitate to call it modular um, because it's not designed to follow any standards where it can uh, match up with other modules. Um, it is uh, sectional in the sense that it's uh, freeform track layout, um, but it's um, structured uh, and held together on um, a number of uh, two and a half foot by four foot long modules. Um, and uh, that you know bears basically the gist of the layout. Uh, the reason for this is uh, I live in a uh, rental property. I know I'm not going to be here forever. Um, this is the largest layout I could fit inside my garage. It's a single car garage in a townhouse. Uh, and so a sectional design appeal for me to be able to move it easily and with the least amount of damage. Um, uh, essentially then, down here on the lower level where the staging yard will be, and all the junk will be gone. Uh, trains will be made up. That staging yard will represent uh, Cumberland, Maryland. Which is um, uh, one of the principal yards for the Western Maryland Railway, which is the railroad, uh, one of the two railroads that serviced uh, the paper mill. Uh, the other railroad being the Baltimore and Ohio, and Cumberland also was uh, a major uh, division yard for the Baltimore and Ohio as well. Um, the specific period that I'm modeling is um, the uh, early 1970s to uh, mid to late 1980s, basically the Chessy system era when um, the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, the Western Maryland Railway, uh, and the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad were merged into one, which was called Chessy system. Uh, at any rate then, trains built down here, when I have operating sessions over here where I mentioned the engine servicing facility, there will be a hostler job who will take care of uh, motive power for all runs originating and terminating in this staging yard. Whether there's going to be additional scenic um, areas or uh, additional industries, I haven't decided yet and I haven't gotten that far. Uh, then up the spiral to this area in that far corner uh, will be a rather significant mountain uh, which will contain, uh, you can sort of see the track that's on the curve here um, that will be uh, inside the mountain in a tunnel um, that uh, tunnel will exit uh, basically right near that blue building uh, and then that becomes uh, the main line. This would be the Western Maryland main line. Uh, even though I have um, the Baltimore and Ohio well represented on the layout in terms of uh, equipment, um, there is no actual trackage.
for the BNO. This is all Western Maryland trackage um, represented on the layout. Uh, there will eventually, uh, just behind that blue building where the tunnel portal comes out, uh, will be a three arch stone viaduct, which is uh, relatively prototypical. Uh, that'll carry a double track BNO main line, but that's just for static display. <clears throat> Uh, I've done some ballasting which helps distinguish so you can see the nicely ballasted uh, main line here uh, and it leads through uh, the main yard which isn't really much of a yard it's just two tracks uh, two industrial tracks which is uh, what we're looking at right now uh, with the coal train and the locomotives behind it uh, a passing and um, multi-purpose siding beside the main line uh, so it can be used for runarounds, it can be used for passing maneuvers on the main line uh, that would be this track let me find my finger in the video this track where these tank cars are located uh, and then two yard, yard uh, tracks uh, one has these cars on it, the other one is empty uh, additional facilities are will be uh, an engine servicing facility, a small one uh, right here. Again, not fully designed or built. Uh, and then the main line continues uh, up a small grade uh, around. Uh, this will eventually be a uh, liquid chemical unloading facility. That building is a uh, solid chemical unloading facility. There, of course, will be the requisite pipes uh, running all over the place, uh, principally intended to feed uh, mill equipment. And the most prominent structure on the layout uh, is my scratch built um, digester building. Uh, this is where the wood chips would come in. Uh, and then uh, be processed um, to create the slurry which would go over to this long building which of course is way out of scale uh, which would have the uh, paper rollers in it that would squeeze the water out and then when uh, the finished paper product is ready it would be loaded onto boxcars or tractor trailers and that's being represented by this building here uh, extreme selective compression uh, and so that takes care of the chemical parts of the facility then what I'm working on now is where this spur comes out you can see the pulp wood cars there that will lead into the wood yard uh, one side will be raw trees which will be processed by a debarker and chipper and then sent to the other side of this track so trees on that side uh, debarked and, and uh, chipped wood chips on this side and then a large conveyor which will carry it over again to the digester building uh, and then there'll be a town in that corner and coming further around <coughs> and there will be a town on both sides of the track here and then back on this side where I explained that mountain in the corner that will also have a town. Um, even though I said there's no continuous running, I did extend the track to the edge of the layout in case I decide to change my mind later. Then I have to tear track up and rebuild it. Got a little bit of scenery put down, some trees, things like that. Working on that. Okay, and that's the uh, general tour of the layout and uh, Briefly, I'll explain the test scenario that I wish to do today. <clears throat> so if you look at the boxcars in this facility here, and I believe there are one, two, three, four, yeah, five of five of them from that rail box car down here to the Baltimore and Ohio car. <clears throat> These all will be cars that uh, have been filled with new, I'm sorry, not new, with um, uh, finished paper rolls. 
uh, and then the two boxes. So these would be fulls, um, and then the two box cars behind it would have carried materials for the roller plant, and uh, those would be empties. Um, and then if you look at the yard area, let me zoom out. Whoops, wrong direction. Uh, you'll see a number of tracks occupied. So basically the assumption is um, doing preparation for this operating session. These three locomotives here uh, are what brought the train in. In this particular case bringing it eastbound to head towards Cumberland but this load was intended for this paper mill. Um, so it dropped it off so we have one, two, three, four, five full tank cars, which are destined then for the current the invisible chemical unloading facility, uh, and then one, two, three, four, five, six box cars, which are destined uh, for the paper loading building to be loaded and uh, further. Uh, shipped down the line to Cumberland for reclassification and shipment out across the country. Essentially a relatively straightforward uh, switching maneuver you would think, but there's a couple of gotchas. Number one, the road power that brought this train in is currently parked on this rear track right here. Uh, and uh, that's because there's really no space left without blocking the main line uh, or the only track available for a runaround uh, which is this number two uh, yard track here um, so they need some place to park so that's where they are right now uh, the coal train is here from a separate maneuver it's being unloaded right now um, which, by the way, I will eventually add coal to these uh, platforms and have magnets on them so that the coal loads can be removed during an operating session. Uh, and so uh, finding a uh, space to temporarily locate any of these cars is going to be challenging, to say the least. Oh, and I forgot to mention the other three cars that came in on this train uh, would be these three pulpwood cars. So they're currently parked in the siding for the wood yard um, and haven't been assigned a track yet, um, which incidentally doesn't exist because I haven't finished that. And because uh, these five loaded tank cars uh, need to be spotted uh, on these two tracks for the chemical unloading facility because it will sit here in the center and this will all be paved section. Uh, the only uh, track left is um, this outer one um, and its purpose is for temporary storage. That's why I put it in there. However, uh, you'll see that the three locomotives of the row power are significantly longer than the available space in that um, uh, it's called a parking siding, for lack of a better term. Uh, another complication is handling the caboose. Uh, where to put it? Um, do you keep it attached to a train or a locomotive during a switching operation? Do you find a place to park it? That's something the operators will need to figure out. We have uh, one locomotive um, with a consist behind it. And if you see the switch layout, uh, off of the main line, this uh, set of industrial spurs comes off, and the locomotive would end up being in, still, excuse me, in front of uh, this string of box cars, and so obviously it will become trapped once it reaches the dead end, which is where that uh, rail box car is, right there. So that's an issue. Similarly, uh, if you got the locomotive behind the consist and pushed all those boxcars in, uh, then you pull up. At some point you'll have to retrieve these two cars, uh, and then once again you'll be in front of it. 
which will cause complications. Um, I specifically designed the track like this to make um, switching this area challenging. Um, another complication I may add down the line is where these three uh, road locomotives are part. Its actual role, this the rear industrial track here, its actual role is to unload uh, dry chemicals uh, into that building right there which I've yet to model the conveyor system that will handle that. Um, so there's the remainder of the track. Um, both of these are stub-ended tracks. Uh, so if in the middle of the switching maneuver for the boxcars, a train arrives with uh, covered hoppers with uh, dry chemicals in them, uh, they would take priority over using this track for parking or uh, any other such things of that nature. <clears throat> and so that boils down to the other locomotive that's available for operations here is this uh, Alco Via 1000 uh, switcher locomotive. Right now it's tied up to the three pulp cars, presumably waiting an assignment of where to locate them, but it can go elsewhere and perform other assignments. So chances are, if you look at this from an operations point of view, you're going to have two crews handling this. Uh, one crew is running this uh, GP40-2. Uh, its number being 4127. And another crew uh, would be handling the VO1000. Here's number if it ever comes into focus. 132. Uh, and then you would have a road crew uh, who is responsible for the road engines on which the train in question came in. Uh, another, what I thought might be a problem but actually turned out okay, um, is the fact that the SD40 2. Uh, and the SD45 um, are large six axle locomotives. Um, this switch leading from the main line to the industrial spurs is a number four switch. I didn't think that uh, those large locomotives would be able to negotiate the switch without derailing, but to my surprise, they did. So at least I can get them back in here. Uh, but still, there's a place, there's there's a situation of where to park them, uh, and uh, that needs to be handled. That said, um, all three of these jobs can also, I believe, be handled by one person. That's a theory uh, we're about to test because I'm the only one here to operate. Uh, so I will be handling all three locomotives and making the decisions on what to do. <clears throat> Uh, given the fact that I've only got one runaround track, the main line, which the general rule of the railroad is that the main line needs to be kept clear um, during most purposes, but uh, crews do have, switching crews do have uh, the discretion to block and use the main line if there are no scheduled trains coming. Uh, but that doesn't account for extras that might be unannounced to a switching crew, so they have to be on their toes if they are, end up using the main line uh, for any purposes during their switching session. So basically what I'm going to do is put the camera back on uh, the tripod and uh, just uh, start filming it and see what I come up with. Uh, see what works and what doesn't and um, make some decisions there uh, as to how I would um, stage all this for an actual operating session. Okay, stand by.